and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sol Sultai Arcbow. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, we have Hawkeye here. I was trying to debate whether I was going to say for joining in with Hawkeye or start going to Sultai, and I just sent them both at the same time. Anyway, uh, yep, this is my cat Hawkeye. He's awesome, and he's joining us for a little bit here. But we got Sultai Arcbow. So this was a donation deck uh, to put together. Um, an almost rotation proof deck. All we have uh, are some lands with like the uh, the dual lands that are uh, rotating out, and then hostage taker. And I think that's about it, right? Yeah, even sideboard wise and everything. So almost a rotation proof deck here. But this one's going to be pretty sweet. We are really focused on the elemental stuff, of course. Risen Reef is pretty busted, and then we got all of our cavaliers. The cavaliers are hard to cast. Right, with them costing five mana, but then the triple colors, and especially having three different ones. But you can kind of get around that with the Arc Bow, of course, because all you have to do is just activate Arc Bow for five, and you can put in any of your Cavaliers that you see. Of course, if you have a Cavalier in hand that you can't cast anyway, you can also just discard it to Arc Bow as well. Um, so yeah, we get all these good value Cavaliers. We got a Yurok, because that card's pretty cool too. And then, of course, Frilled Mystics. Frilled Mystic is just a really good card to be playing with Arcbow, where you can hold up Frilled Mystic or um, or activate Arcbow. You know, like, so if your opponent plays something you want to counter, you can cast your Frilled Mystic. If they don't, then you can just um, activate your Arcbow. The one, the one kind of problem, though, with Frilled Mystic and then Hostage Shaker Chupacabra is, like, let's say your opponent casts a creature. And then you can either... So, like, at that point, you can either... Uh, activate Arc Bow, look for Frill Mystic to counter the creature, or let the creature resolve and then activate Arc Bow and then try to hit Chupacabra or Hostage Taker. So, like, that's a little bit of tension there. But for all the other, like, good synergies and, and everything, how it works out, uh, it's worth that um, tension. Um, but yeah, like, that's something that, you know, you just kind of have to kind of have to go with. Um, yeah, so even with, yeah, if they have a, a three-man Teferi in play, you still get to activate Arcbow. So you can still activate Arcbow, find Frilled Mystic, put it into play, and then counter a spell. So you can still counter a spell uh, even with, even like with three-man Teferi in play. Um, I got some Agent of Treacheries for the, the games that go long. Like if our opponent's just playing a slow deck, we got Agent of Treacheries. We got Unmoored Ego against Field of the Dead. Uh, play Crafters, like our anti-Planeswalker removal and then some more uh creature removal in here with like legion's end it's possible i need more just anti-aggro removal instead of having veil uh, veil of summer and negate like i have too much stuff for slow decks here in the sideboard so that's that's one thing i'm a little worried about but um against aggro overall we have like a pretty good main deck though you know like we got all these chupacabras and hostage takers and like these cavaliers are like really good blockers like all of them are so like we have a, a decent uh game one plan against aggro decks in general uh yeah we got one we got one yurok in here also um so yeah so pretty cool little deck here let's give it a try so like we like to do with the donation decks unless stated specifically we're gonna go ahead and and, and unless uh like, if you donate for a deck, if you want me to play in ranked, I will. Otherwise, I just play them in the traditional constructed queue. So let's see how we do with some games here. Let's play a league. Let's see if we can get that five-win league. It's been evading us. We got close with the Mono Black Vampires earlier. But I think we're going to get it this time, Hawkeye. We're going to do it. Cool, cool, cool. Perfect. See, Arcbo does a good job of fixing your mana. Don't have don't have two black to cast your card. Yeah, just discard it and find a different four drop. We're never gonna arc activate Arcbo for less than four with this deck. Well, 
that would be a really strange scenario to activate it for less than four. Don't just like play it on two and then we don't have a three a three mana play, so just activate it. Just you know, discard a card and activate it on three. That's not something I'm going to be doing here. Like with this hand, I'm probably just going to not not do anything on turn three and just wait till turn four. Ooh. Well, we'll just go with Leaf Kindred first. This does mean we can just have Frilled Mystic next turn. All right, good, good. But now we're going to have Frilled Mystic next turn either way, whether we play Druid or not. So we'll have Arc Bow so that we can have the Mystic or just discard Druid now and dig. Oh, guys, loving these ear scratches. And yeah, Dre Leaf Can Druid is going to be the card to discard if we discard. But we're probably going to be casting Frill Mystic. Like, if they play anything pre combat, I'm Mysticking. That would count as something. Man, Frilled Mystic is such a strong card. It's unfortunate that Dreadhorde Butcher can take out both Mystics. Mystic can still take out a 3 3. Man, just a land would be the best because activating Arcbo for 5 is. Certainly better than activating it for four with all of the uh, <clears throat> with all the cavaliers in our deck. They just have their third shock. <laughs> I guess I had three mystics. I can't complain too much. All right, so three mystics traded with six cards, three shocks, and three creatures. We did get three straight two for ones. I'm going to hold both. I'm just going to be discarding both of these. Ooh, that's a mean card. Let's look at six cards. Looking for like, you know, blue cavalier, green cavalier. Um, I'm happy we'll just let that resolve. Wouldn't mind a hostage taker. These little guys are great. Of course, they could hit your rock as well. Get some lifelink. link. 
So would I rather hostage take the spawn of mayhem or just chupacabra it? I'll just chupacabra it so I can activate arc bow again. My opponent hasn't seen any elementals from us. Oh no, they they saw a leafkin druid. It's a one elemental. But we know our other filled mystics down to the bottom now. So now we we definitely know we don't need to activate Arcbow in response, because um, it's one of our bottom five cards. It gets put down there randomly, right? Yeah. Say hi to my fiery friends. Yeah, Arcbow decks are a lot of fun. I think we can just play this land here. Probably gonna be Consider this bridge burned. Arc bow for five. I put the Cavalier of Night back where we know we'll be able to hit the Arc bow here. All right. Good job, Arc bow. So yeah, as we talked about, I don't have a whole lot of stuff against aggro in general here. But our main deck plan is usually pretty good. So if we play the Legion's Ends... I mean, it's kind of like just get rid of Playcrafter and Risen Reef, I guess. I don't know, Playcrafter could get rid of a Chandra or something. Probably just get rid of those. Maybe. Maybe I trim a two mana creature. Would I rather have Vivian or Risen Reef? Or Playcrafter? Risenry is basically just like draw one card and then later on maybe draw some others. Vivian is also draw one card. I'm not sure if I want if I want two Vivians or or the two Risen Reefs in here, honestly. I'm not sure. I'll just keep the Risen Reefs, I suppose. I don't know. This deck. No, I'm going to go with the Vivians. I think our opponent's deck is playing... Um, yeah, like, we, we've been playing against, like, this red-black deck that's playing, like, fungal, fungal infection and stuff like that. Like, and obviously we saw, like, the shock. Just things that are, like, really good against... Um, against Risen Reef. Hmm. I like this better whenever we had Arc Bow. Ooh. Let's 
going just like last game. Yes, I would like a Cavalier of Thorns. Thank you. Ah, there's the land for the opponent. I don't really want to to activate Arcbow this turn. I really want to cast Frilled Mystic because I don't really want to just to just discard a land whenever I have the Cavalier of Thorns. Cool. That was a really hasty Noxious Grasp there. So they would have waited, they could Noxious Grasp this Cavalier in response to the trigger. I mean, honestly, I could just keep the Land War off on top because I'm just going to be discarding it to Arcbow anyway. Now we're just activating Arcbow, but putting it on the bottom means that you know we'll still discard the next card and then we'll be farther in further, further in to our deck. Um not a good attack for me. Alright, pass turn. Gross. Nothing spectacular for Cavalier to put back on top. Like, Rilled Mystic, I guess? I could also just leave it in the graveyard, though, as well. Like, just leave Cavalier Thorns in the graveyard. Um, I'm going to do that. I want it in the graveyard in case we find another Cavalier Thorns. Which I think we only have two in here, though, right? Yeah, we just got the two. Hmm. Hostage Shaker or Yurok? We'll go Yurok. It's a fun deck to play. But double Theater of Horrors is pretty nice. They get three cards a turn. This is going to be tough to uh, outgrind still. The Yurok on the battle, Yurok plus Arcbow on the battlefield does mean I wish I had Risen Reef instead of, like, more Risen Reefs instead of the Vivians at this stage of the game. But yeah, that is true. We don't have any dead draws. And, like, all of our draws are, like, kind of like collected companies. Like, we get to look at six, six cards for each draw. Cannot be countered. So probably don't need to try countering that. I really expected Chandra. Let's get toasty. Giving me the emblem.
guess I want Cavalier. So I know I can activate for five to cast Cavalier. Sorry, friend. Um, do I want to play Lanor Elf? Yeah. Yeah, we'll Lanor Elf. Like I think I, I guess I can just discard Legion's End, honestly. I'm gonna get some more mana so we can maybe even do a couple of things. Cause like if we're gonna ha get another Cavalier and, and draw a whole bunch more cards, could be able to have like Frilled Mystic Plus uh, activate for five by just playing one more land. It's nice having options. Either we get another Cavalier of Gales or a Frill Mystic. And the Spawn of Mayhem being out of here means these theaters aren't just immediately turned on. So yeah, now they're going to go for Bedevil. Swamp Bedevil. Why are you playing the mountain? Play the swamp. You have two black sources and four mountains already. Well, that was a pretty sweet game. Yeah, that's what I thought they were going to do with, with Chandra is minus five on the Uruk. And exile, exile that. Because then, cause then that forces my hand also. Because then I'm like, well, I, I want to get like that extra trigger. So do I just activate Arcbow now? And then if I activ activate Arcbow now and get that blue Cavalier, then they know not to attack with their Spawn of Mayhem. But we'll take it. Pretty cool little game there. One game in, I'm already a fan. Alright, we'll keep. So we got Druid on two, Risen Reef on three, Risen Reef on four, Double Druid on five. This is like the worst hand ever against Legion's End, though. No, so we just won the one match. We we played two games there, but I think that that was our first match, though. So it's just one to know. Legion's End would just be so rough. I don't think I should play the Leafkin Druid until after Risen Reefs. Like, Legion then. Okay, well. Against Grixis deck, I'm thinking, alright, we're gonna have some time. Never mind, no, no time available. Time is not available anymore.
All right, got rid of two lands. Maybe they grabbed a third land as well. Hmm. They probably got Frilled Mystic. Do I play around Frilled Mystic? If they're just shocking a passing, that's got to be Frilled Mystic. Alright, well that worked. Now, Cavalier of Night could kill Thief of Sanity. And of course, obviously, we kept the Drowned Catacomb on top. Because they're going to just be doing stuff with Thief. I like that card. I don't really like playing it into all this open mana, though. But I'm just saying I like that card. Boo. Well, the opponent learned their lesson about countering Leafkin Druid last turn, I suppose. Well, that's unfortunate. They found Frilled Mystic, Frilled Mystic off this Thief of Sanity. Those are two really great cards to find. Um, do I just take eight? I guess I block this. I'm expecting Nickel Ball's Dragon God here. And then I Hostage Taker, Thief of Sanity, and recast it. Awesome, Radical Guru, yeah. Let me know how the deck goes for you. Yeah, Thief of Sanity wrecked us real bad. Alright, that's fine. Stop taking my awesome cards. They took two Frilled Mystics and a Chupacabra. Took three two-for-ones from me. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I know, right? Thief Sandy's so rude.
Looks like we got a difficult turn over here. Timeout used. Cast down. Hmm. That did look to be a pretty difficult turn. You had to cast your removal spells and then kill your opponent. A lot of nuances there. A lot of difficulty. Multiverse will bend to my will. Okay, so we need to make sure that we don't die to Thief of Sanity immediately. Don't really know exactly how we make sure that's the case, to be honest. Maybe a little bit more luck than anything there. So all their threats are like pretty decent to play Crafter away, all their cards. Um, an extra Viv Vivian can give my creatures reach, like with the tick up, plus it's a good card advantage thing. And then Veil of Summers, obviously. But what four cards would I want to cut? That's the hard part here. Everything, like, I like, I like the 64. Let me just go with 64. I like all these cards. Um, leave, leavekins. Do I just just get rid of like my mana creatures? Yeah, agent of treachery could be really nice in a later game too. Maybe that's better. Maybe. Treachery is better than Hostage Taker, where we need Hostage Taker to, sur to survive instant speed removal, which is. Which can be tough. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. I'm thinking this could be a long game. And we don't need the ramp as much. Maybe, maybe not the Play Crafter. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the, the negates in the sideboard could be cast downs if you want more spot removal. Um, that was something I talked about before. I, I may not have had enough against aggro here, enough enough like spot removal. So yeah, I'm, I can definitely see that. Hasn't been a game ever where they don't have Thought Razor on two, of course. All right, draw lands. Very good. And now, 
where we're at, we do not want that Paradise Druid to be vulnerable. Mystic's a nice draw. Could be debating like what creature they want to throw into a chupacabra. What a beating. What a beating. Yeah, that was a great play by the opponent. That was a perfect play against Real Mystic. Certainly hoping for no more flame sweeps. No, I feel like they if they had another one, they probably would have just played it that last turn and killed the Paradise Druid with it. They've kept like all their cards with Thought Erasures, they kept both the cards, they they scry that to the top. They've been keeping everything. Like if this is a sweeper, it's probably over. Not a sweeper. The immortal Nicole Bolas will be your end. I will return one day. Witness a moat of my power. Let's see if you're worthy. Have you ever lost a home? It's fine. I guess I'll just put it on the bottom though. Like it's it's kind of whatever because I'm probably just discarding it. So attack them for nine, put them down to three. I think that's my play here. So that or they go to eight. I guess this is still a one-turn clock here, and this this does incentivize them to play in that Kefnet more. So I want them to play the Kefnet. But still just... It's going to make it easier to outgrind them, not having Nicol Bolas there that's getting rid of something all the time. Whole cut mana creatures and then play Agent of Treachery. <laughs> Idea looks silly. Starting over is the only way. <laughs> I 
<laughs> there you go. There you go, Matthew. When you win the lottery this Friday, buying everybody a playset of standard. Very nice. All right, Leafkin Druid survive Flame Sweep. All right, kind of not sure I should have cut those. I was thinking, like, you know, Paradise Druid, they're not going to be able to kill right away. But they're playing Flame Sweep. Could also just have Legion Zen, though. I should probably just diversify. What do I think about Hostage Taker? Let's go with this. Hundred and thirteen million mega millions, man. That is life changing money. If you hit that, which is just like, you know, the less than, you know, like you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. Chance, but. Like it's, it's actually like statistically, you really do have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than winning the lottery. <laughs> but there is a chance. Have you, Ragabosh? You've been struck by lightning? There's one person, like the, like the Guinness Book of World Records or whatever, but I was just hearing about, hearing about like the record, right? Uh, there's somebody who's alive currently that's been struck by lightning seven times. Seven. And, you know, just has, like, you know, has, you know, been injured and everything. But then, yeah, it's been struck by lightning seven times. This wasn't my best keep. It's looking worse after, like on the play, I definitely wouldn't have kept this, but on the draw, it's like, yeah, we could draw some lands. Okay, so there's a doc documentary, doc documentary called Powder, Powder about him, Powder, P-O-W-D-E-R. Okay, cool. It's good to know. Yep, it's always turn two thought erasure, always. Come on, draw land. Yes. Get that thing out of here. All right, good job, Playcrafter. Way to do your job. That Thief of Sanity is so good against us with a deck full of two-for-ones. As we saw that game one, we got completely wrecked by Thief of Sanity. No, I haven't. Jack Nilly. No, I hadn't seen that. My poor elemental. Man, I really don't like these Cavalier Thorns. We have one card in hand that we can cast, and it draws a card. And yet they take a card that we need to draw a couple more mana to cast. So there are no more Cavalier of Thorns in the deck. Those are the only two.
If I just like lead with Leaf Kendrua, they just kill the Risen Reef in response, like immediately. Um. Bottom of him. Yeah, they have a whole lot of creatures in their deck. Hoping we get to get two two creatures for the price of one little doggy. If we draw a land here, we can also just go Vivian Champion of the Wilds, tick up, darn, and give the Yurok um, reach as well. Definitely killing this. Question is, do I save the land for Arcbo or get Vivian in play? I'm gonna get Vivian in play. It's also just good not to have cards in hand Beast against our opponent's Nicol Bolas deck. Wait. You think nature is kind? So now, like whatever we discard or whatever we draw, we're just gonna be using Arcbo and everything. Oh, you're welcome, Monty. Let me show you what was lost. Well, we can kill creatures. Gods once. I am one again. Druid's a good you card. Like a city brat. To discard. I mean, Risen Reef is awesome, but so is Cavalier Gales. Your defiance is infuriating. I'm just taking the five power flyer. Now, strike hard. Now we got Frilled Mystic up. So I think we got this. <clears throat> Meow. Yeah, this deck's been really fun so far. Yeah, Samantha donated this one. I I mean I built the I built this deck, um, but the don yeah donation was to 
put together a Sultai arc bow that doesn't have too much uh, rotating. And, and yeah, this has worked out really well so far. Yeah, the... Yeah, haven't faced vamps or zombos yet. True, true, true. Um, the two negates are probably overkill. I mean, like I have like the negates more for like combo. Like that, those are probably unnecessary. Like maybe, the, yeah, maybe there should be like some cast downs that we were talking about, like uh, tyrant scorn. Honestly, tyrant scorn works pretty well in this deck of just like also being able to bounce our frilled mystics or just you know like our creatures or you know like. Or be removal against early decks. Could be a couple of Tyrant Scorns. I'm not sure if there's really too much. I don't think I'd really change anything too much if I wasn't worried about rotation. I didn't. You know, I, I still did play like the Hostage Takers, like the Mana Base is what I wanted. It's just really how our aggro matchup is and if I have enough here against it, which I'm not sure if I do. Um, yeah, Toast, I think the problem with Green-White Value Town in Modern right now is probably Renin 6. That card picking off all the mana creatures. Sounds pretty rough. Hmm. I mean, my, my best turn right here is to go Arcbow Elf. Elves and then start activating Arcbow next turn. The problem with that turn, of course, is Goblin Chain Whirler. If I do something else, am I beating Chain Whirler anyway? Probably not, honestly. Yeah, probably not. So please no chain whirler. We're certainly dead if they have chain whirler. If they don't have chain whirler, we are alive. But not certain how alive. GG's. I went to like shock for plague crafter and that's just not getting there that's all all right legions ends in I can actually play some negates Here as well. Countering like burn spells that kill my creatures can be really nice. Cutting the Paradise Druids. You know, still weak to Chain Whirler. And let's go with this. I want to hopefully have our five drops take over. Five drops are really important. You know, your rock and uh, Cavalier of Night, both big life linkers, but even just Cavalier of Thorns and Cavalier of Gales, both huge creatures.
Okay. I can deal with this hand. We got to kind of see if we wanted to play Land War Off or not, depending on what they had. But I can deal with this. Hey, what's up, Rick? Thank you so much for that resub, Rick. That is sub number nine on the day. We're only one away from that sub goal. Gotta get those hype boats in the chat. For our resub there. Yeah, the acronym BREAD for drafting, that's Bombs, Removal, Evasion. Um, and then, what does the A stand for? Yeah, maybe, yeah, I think probably, I don't, yeah, you're saying aggro or abilities. I could see that. Hey, thanks there, Whopper Stopper. Getting us to our sub goal, that's sub goal number 18. Towards our next 12 hour stream. So, just need two more. So, we just need to hit our sub goal tomorrow and Friday. And then we're going to be doing 12 hour sub battle stream Saturday. So, it's aggro. And then. Uh, and then, yeah, duds or. Um, yeah, basically like your, yeah, your last picks, your duds. Dang, that would have been nice to activate arc bow for five to play that card. I do, if I'm activating arc bow, I do want to activate for five, not four. There's so many important fives. I just want to cast Cavalier of Thorns. Or sorry, Cavalier of Night. Yeah, I just want a 4-5 lifelink in play. And finally, we're going to activate Arcbow after we've already won the game. Uh, we don't get to activate it. <laughs> All right, Arcbow didn't help us too much there. Admittedly. Because our draws were too good. We just drew all of our Frilled Mystics. We didn't have to go look searching for Frilled Mystic or Negate. But yeah, Negate looked pretty good there. All right, have a good night, Radical Guru. Yeah, the, the Legion's Ends were huge, both being two-for-ones. Yeah, they were very good. Picked the right card there with the Firebrand. <clears throat> Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> Tough side warding call here for our opponent. that yeah yep I'm gonna be doing yeah I'm gonna be doing a set review for the upcoming set I always do that um, usually do that like the day whenever the full set comes out we, we take a like a whole day stream like the, the Friday take the whole day and talk all about the cards and everything, go through every single card in the set and talk about like h how they could be used for standard um, and so on. It's a lot of fun. And so yeah, I usually do that Friday because a lot of times the sets are re completely re released on a Friday. So yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh man, can we draw another Legion's End? Man, another Legion's End would be so good. Bleh. This is going to be tough. And we're probably just dead. Looks like we need Legion's End. Like if I, I could play Cavalier of Thorns, but of course that cost me two life. And then I go down to five, and they just attack out here. I just die. Actually, you know, I just take the five and I die. Um. So I gotta hope that card in hand is a land, and that they draw a land. That's step one. I need that them just to have two lands. But pretty awesome hand for them for like basically their turn four. I'm I'm like real dead. Still need to draw Legion's End. That's over. All right, so yeah, we could probably have a little bit more removal in our sideboard for aggro decks. Two and one. Easy, easy oversight to fix afterwards. Not, not a difficult one to fix there.
two and one. This has been a really long league. So far for our three matches. We've had some really slow opponents. It looks like this opponent is being very slow as well. Come on. <laughs> uh, you know, getting to the end of the night. I just want to play magic and continue on. I don't want to sit here and wait two minutes for the opponent to decide whether or not to play first. Tough call. What to put back. It's a tough call. This is my worst decision against aggro, but against every other deck. It's my best decision. So naturally we're playing aggro. Like Esper Vampires. You are fortunate I have I have sired many warriors. Hmm. We're going to need to use lots of mana, so I prioritize playing Land of War Elf and also getting Risen Reef in play so we can just have the most mana we can. No, Druk, I, I just stream here. Um... Each day. This is my full time job of streaming. That's a really good trade for me. So this puts us down to nine. Would you like to see what's left of Scar? <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you. Show some respect. We'll see if our opponent kills us. All right, they figured it out. <clears throat> All right.
right, let's see. Yeah, Nightfell Predator is a little tough, but we do have we do have some stuff for it. You know, we got some blockers with the uh, two cavaliers. And I think I want to take out Frilled Mystic in this matchup. I think that's what I want to do in light. It's just I think I want to take out Frilled Mystic here. The Vivian can give my creature reach, but hmm. Let's try this. <laughs> oh, th that deck looked really impressive there. Yeah, I'm saying the deck's not that great, but no, that, that looked that looked really good. <clears throat> I mean, we kind of saw like with our mono black vampire deck too. Just just playing Soren, your life is going to be. Uh, your life's going to be easier when you have Soren out there. Soren is just an awesome, awesome magic card. Very push, very strong for three mana, but of course it's only only good in the one kind of deck, a deck with vampires. But yeah, you're playing Soren, you got a chance. I'm not sure if I want to use Temple now. I kind of want to just play the Watery Grave. Yeah, I'm just going to play the Watery Grave because I don't really... It doesn't really matter to me what we draw this turn since we know we're going to be playing the Cavalier of Thorns this next turn. I'd rather, like, after Cavalier of Thorns, then, then we take a couple of draw steps, then we have some more information about what we have in our... I guess you do. ...in our hand. And what we need. Um, this is a good time for Play Crafter. Both my Vela Summers. And an Arc Bow down. But yeah, we can, we can re-grab that Arc Bow, assuming Cavalier of Thorns dies here somehow. And then we can just double play Crafter next turn. Best case scenario is no creature here. Our 
feeds thirst for life. Well, this is good. Either they're Predator or they're Soren dies, one of the two, and then the other two are going to get Playcrafted away. I think I keep the Leafkin Drew because that lets us play Arcbow and Gales next turn. All right, gonna gonna play the Cinchulin Harbor out so we can just play the Arcbow without having to tap Druid so that if they have removal for Cavalier of Gales, then I would chump block with the Leafkin Druid. And removal would not have even been the worst thing because then we would shuffle those cards back anyway. But it's a, it's okay to draw those those lands though because, um, because we're just going to be discarding the lands to the, the arc bow anyway. So we don't we don't have to like, uh, didn't have to like just activate arc bow last turn just to get get rid of a land. There, it's okay to have those right there. Don't really need to kill the champion of dusk. Let's get this card advantage. Get this started. We're looking at nine cards. <laughs> we gotta find some good stuff. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's not anything good in nine cards. One more turn. <clears throat> the good news is Thought Razor doesn't matter too much against Arcbow. Because they're like, oh, you just have these cards that aren't any good. All right, so two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alright, keep the backup arc bow for now. Let's say this has to hit all of our Am I gonna mill myself out if I take your rock? I don't know, maybe.
All right, those are gone. I'm, of course, sacrificing Risen Reef. Or just both the Risen Reefs. <clears throat> just sack both the Risen Reefs, really. Okay. Game number three. Here we go. We'll see if we got Night Vale Predator going to be ruining our day or not. So if we take out the two negates from the sideboard for two anti-aggro cards, like two cards that are good against red and vampires, what two cards do y'all think that we should be playing? Creatures are more valuable with arc bow, remember, but there's... Like, should they just be, like, disfigures? Should I just play a fourth Legion's End? I think Masker Girl's probably too slow for those kind of matchups. You know, could go Plague Mare, but that doesn't isn't reliable to kill things. Yeah, as far as the other removal spells, yeah, cast down, tyrant scorn are some good options there. But we're not gonna play Soot in our creature deck. We don't want to just, like, play mana creatures and ramp into Ritual of Set. It's not a great idea. Uh, a great thing for us to do. You're welcome, makers. I don't like Obnixilis' Cruelty. I'd rather have the two mana spells. Well, good scry. It's probably starts with fourth legions end. That's just the best that's just the best card. That's so probably fourth legions end and then something else. Definitely playing this. I guess I'm just playing this too. Well, Veil Summer doesn't do anything against Fairy. Could play one trophy. That's more like it. Yeah, I could have fourth Legion's End and one Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, that's doable. The trophy's very versatile. That's certainly doable. Finally a land. I'll just put that in our hand so we can cast Land War Elf here and then cast Dark Bow. I'll just be discarding these Veil of Summers to the Arc Bow. Don't worry, I got this.
Ooh, that would be nice to draw black mana. Frilled Mystic is out of the deck, so don't need to try. Trust you, I have a plan. My bloodline flows through you. Oh, that was to spark. Where's black mana? I thought that was noxious grasp. I was confused there for a little bit. Black mana, hooray! Sunder and army, welcome to the channel. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Still just gonna activate Arc Bow. I could, you know, could attack the fairy for two. We'll just activate Arc Bow still though. Darn it. This might be a bad idea. I'm known for my excellent timing. Now this this is like black white vampire splashing to fairy and night vale predator. That's how it was meant to happen. So now, since they bounce the land, we're off. We get to. We get to discard it to the arc bow. Right on schedule. There goes nothing. <laughs> Teferi's awesome. Yeah, so this is Krokai's deck. Yeah, that's what everybody's saying. Um, no, I, I understand putting Teferi in here. I, I'm not so sure about the Night Vale Predator inclusion still, but honestly, like, splashing blue for, for Teferi and, like, Unmoored Ego in the sideboard against the Field of the Dead decks. Nothing wrong with that. This is hardly oh, watch a worst your feat. I'm not, yeah, but I'm interested in, in some Esper zombies, or sorry, vampires. I'm just not very convinced on the predator, the Night Vale predator. The blood calls to your soul. Or croaky, sorry. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I remember that I pronounced his name wrong the last time, but I couldn't. I was thinking, like, how did I pronounce the last time I knew it was wrong? And so.
All right, so we're going to make them sacrifice Soren and Adanto Vanguard with Plague Crafter. We'd sacrifice Plague Crafter and something else. Or just get Cavalier of Night. Or hostage Taker and take it. Let's do the Plague Crafter. It gets rid of the Soren and everything, too. We already have like infinite mana now. I conveniently have all of my removal at sacrifice. I have two plague crafters in the deck. I have two cards that are like one in the main deck, one in the sideboard. I wouldn't say that's all of my removal. Or convenient. All right, three and one. Three and one. Down, 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 down. Okay. Getting all them pets. <laughs> Knock out, knocking over the mic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I just really wants those pets. Yeah, we're staying a little late tonight, Hawkeye. Okay? Our league's been taking a little while. I'll feed you whenever we get done streaming. For now, you get pets. Sorry, yeah, Hawkeye knocked over the mic onto the mouse. Sorry about that for... You headphone listeners. So they're a Field of the Dead deck with Land War Elf? Interesting. Playing Leafkin there just guarantees us to have more mana and everything, but obviously playing Leafkin's after Risen Reef also helps us dig. Maybe this is just a, a Bant deck and not a Field of the Dead deck. Maybe. Perfect scry land there, giving us our double blue to be able to have Frilled Mystic as well. Like next turn, I can play Cavalier Thorns and have Frilled Mystic available. Uh, it's not a Field of the Dead deck, it's regular band stuff. Rise, my elemental friend.
Man, remember when we didn't have lands just a little bit ago? That was just a short little bit ago. Yeah, the last turn I, I didn't put the land into play because my land in hand was Woodland Cemetery and was going to come into play tapped because I only had Hinchland Harbor and... Or, I don't know, whatever it was. Like, my land was coming to play tapped, so I had to put the land into my hand so I could shock it in so that I could play the other Leafkin Druid last turn. Which is, so basically... That's why I declined the Risen Reef the previous turn, was because I needed, because that was an untapped land and the land in my hand was not an untapped land. So I needed to be able to just play that, to be able to play the Leafkin Druid, the second one. This is gonna be tough. Um, you know, like this is. Be wary of the ground you know, Nissa, Nissa ult is going to be tough to stop. Basically, we have to play Cavalier Gales next turn and just hope the Gales hits it. I suppose. Yuck. Oh yeah, you're right, Ripper. I guess I didn't really think about that. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. If I just let the, the shock land come into play tapped with the Risen Reef, then we would have had... Yeah, I didn't recompute, but then... Yeah, then the check land in my hand would have then come into play untapped. In my head, I was just thinking that it was coming into play... Arc buzzer, really good draw. Let's go this route. Let's go Risen Reef first. Okay, so I want. I want Frilled Mystic up. Six mana right now. All right, well, we don't get to attack that Nissa, so that Nissa is going to be ultimating. Correct. Um, correct, yeah. So that's what I, I usually do, like putting the, the Reef Trigger second, because then you you stack your two cards where you just put a land on top and then you just have the Risen Reef Trigger get you that land. But in this case, I know I'm I'm shuffling the land away, and I, I wanted that extra card, and I wanted more information um, with the gales. Risen Reef is just worth so many cards. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll have five mana, and then, like, so I'm going to be playing your rock next turn. So I play your rock, then I'm going to have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, then I'll still have eight after your rock to find like Chupacabra or Hostage Taker. I know Hostage Taker Tristani is not spectacular, but Hostage Taker can just take these lands or just take take the Krasis. Obviously, take a Krasis in a land. Harness the elements. What's up, Aaron? Thanks for that resub. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I want to play? I guess we're we're going towards our next goal now. Um I'm gonna play Leaf Can Druid and then just do six. Yeah, playing Leaf Can Druid just does just draw two also. Keeping the Paradise Druid in hand for Arcbow, of course. Alright. I don't really want Plague Crafter, even though that gets rid of Nyssa. We're just going to be staring at each other a lot like that. That's an this is an agent of treachery matchup for sure. Maybe another Vivian, but I don't know about this other Vivian. Cause I I kind of need all these things. I definitely need troops and hostage takers. I don't really need cavalier thorns as much. Like the longer the match, like the cavalier thorns just kind of makes us mill out. Is of course obviously a really good blocker. I can probably get away with only playing one, though. Yeah, that's true. They do have Tristani, but I have, I have ways to kill Tristani. I think it's fine. The other thing, Agent, like, Tristani only gets you back creatures. Agent can take lands. Agent can take uh, Planeswalkers. See, like, if we Agent of Treachery Nyssa, they don't get Nyssa back with Tristani. Tristani only checks creatures. So, you know, like, that's our, that's our anti-Planeswalker removal. Because, yeah, I'm not playing Unmored Ego because our opponent has just a lot of cards that, that can beat us. I think Unmored Ego is really only good whenever they have like one one or two cards that, that beat you that you really want to take out of their deck that are just vital to their deck. You know, yeah, you take Nyssa, they can still just play all the rest of their cards just fine. Um, you know, take Hydroid Crisis, they can just kill you with Nyssa and other stuff. And Because Ego, you have to take a turn off to play on more Ego. You know, like you're playing it for like three minutes, like taking your turn up. And also, you don't actually gain get any card advantage. from Like, it's card disadvantage because it doesn't take any cards out of their hand because whatever you take out of their hand, they replace. So it's it's always a one for zero. So you, you need it to be... And it's like, you have to take a turn off to one for zero yourself. You, it has to be, like, you know, just backbreaking. 
in order to do that. And this is not the kind of matchup that I want to be doing that. Um, hello. So, okay, you're missing a Cavalier Gale. Should you play a Cavalier of Knight or Cavalier of Thorns instead? Is the question. And... I'd say probably knight. I mean, knight's good, but I only have two black mana right now. I'll just put it down at the bottom. Yeah, we have a lot of, like, by the time you're playing it, you can sacrifice a mana creature pretty easily. Or, you know, Ravenous Chupacabra, Hostage Taker are good creatures to sacrifice. But I think our, our deck is a little worse against aggro. And I think I like Cavalier of Night better against aggro than Cavalier of Thorns, just because of that lifelink. And there are times like where you're getting beaten down by a flyer or something. Tapping the elves, because then if they, they use like a removal spell on the elf, then I wouldn't be able to have Frilled Mystic up still. Like if I, if they, you know, like they're not playing black, but just for example, or like a baffling end. Like let's say they like baffling end one elf, then I wouldn't be able to like have Frilled Mystic up necessarily. Troops is good. We'll keep that one right there. Yeah, absolutely, Caster. Absolutely. No, I don't. I don't believe that Land Werewolf is too strong to print in standard. No. Maybe. All right. I'm just going to Chupacabra this. Maybe like a year and a half ago, that was accurate. But they've they've been making it standard, um, very powerful recently, and I don't think the land world is too good. Whenever there's whenever we live in a world of you know like Kaya like four mana wrath like Kaya wrath Kaya's wrath and everything else that we have. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good chance that they have time wipe. Good call. It's a good chance they do. I should probably play around that. But yeah, I, I don't play Paper Magic anymore. I'm focused on streaming every day. I have in the past, of course. I 
So would I rather discard Leafkin Druid to play Risen Reef? To get Risen Reef in play right now? Or just wait a turn? I just wait a turn. And just play Risen Reef and then go from there. Yeah, there yeah, there's some flying decks that are viable. Yeah, flying's a, a very uh powerful a very powerful option. All right, got another arc bow. If Cavalier of Do Cavalier of Gales dies, the card that I want to shuffle back in my hand is the Paradise Druid. So putting that back on top. So if they do go like time wipe, pick up Deputy, we'll shuffle that away. Because remember, whenever this dies, we it's automatic. You shuffle it, then scry two. So you'd, so that would not have been a good time to put something like a real good card back on top of the library there. Yep, I stream every day here from 3 Eastern to 10 Eastern is usually my, usually like the stream time. Sometimes it, um, uh, sometimes, uh, thanks Oz. Ugh. Um, sometimes end a little early, sometimes go a little late, you know, depending on the decks. Play four decks and we are currently on our fourth deck. We're going a little late today. Correct. Yeah. So we could have, we could, yeah. So that, those are the options. Draw one, then brainstorm or brainstorm, then draw one. Power surges through these lands. There's different times I want to do different ones. I was thinking brainstorm, then draw one of like just putting a land back on top and grabbing the land there. Last game I did it the other way around because with having with having Arcbow in play I knew um, like and and that's the other thing I didn't really want to get get you know brainstorm locked I didn't want to get locked for two draw steps but like with Arcbow in play you don't mind putting like like you want to probably draw your card first in that case um This is seven. We still have five mana. I'm going to decline and shock this in to make it six mana. All right, six mana to activate Arcbow. I don't want to go. I don't want to go down to four because there's so many good cards at five that I, I'm trying to hit here. Favorite deck tonight is probably this one that we're currently playing. This isn't a fight you can win. So I don't think we really have to be worried about time wipe when they're playing Nissa. The destroying all your lands is not really a good idea. I 
want them to have that card advantage. I'm already doing just fine. Yeah, I haven't played an elf deck in a while, but yeah, I've it's been a couple of months. But I've played some elf, elf decks um, here on Arena, but it's like I said, it's been a couple of months since I have. We got the arc bow. Let's draw the card first. Um, just gonna decline. There we go. How are we doing on mana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could put. These two back. I understand Tristani's a card. Each player gains controls of all creatures they own. Creatures being the operative thing there. This is a planeswalker. So now we have the in we have instant speed stuff turned on now. So that's why agent, you know, steal we don't steal the planeswalkers, we don't want to steal creatures. I guess maybe I should have just pick back to picked agent back up. I was thinking just start getting rid of some of those creatures, but yeah, I guess I could have done that. All right, big crisis. Not too worried about that right now, that crisis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because we have. We can like arc bow for 11 and still hold up Frilled Mystic. Make it 12. Probably just make Here it 11. Just looking for removal. Well, let's see. If we do 8... Let's do eight. Wow. Ugh, that's not, that's not good. Okay, that went 
very poorly. Let's tear this place apart. There is wonder in a blade wow. of grass. That went very poorly. Yeah, you can have more than one planeswalker at a time. You can have as many as you want. As long as they have different... They have to be different planeswalkers. You can't have two of the exact same planeswalker in play. Because they are legendary. Arena is getting really slow with us having it on for, like, this league being so long. And then this game, this game state with all these game objects everywhere. So now everything's lagging. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, that's... That's level one. That's the, that's the, uh, link for uh, newer players or people just wanting to to learn and grow their game, and everything. It's a really nice course. Tear it down. Tear it all down. I am in need of rest. Six. Seven. protect you I'm a little worried about milling out they're at 36 I'm at 27 but I got dubs risen reef Okay. Guess Arc Bow is getting me there. All right, four and one. Y'all know that what that means. We're on to the final boss. I'm gonna go ahead and reset though, as you saw how uh, laggy that was getting everything. I'm gonna do a reset, just exit, reopen. You know, just get that refresh in there. Yeah, this has just been a long league. And so I think we could use a reset. All right, final boss playlist. Let's go. 
Here we go. Hey, Thorns, GG's. <laughs> Thanks, Arx Jelly, for the scoop cheer. I assume I'm playing in the right thing, right? I guess I just kind of hit, like, play. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're there. All right, we're good. Just want to join, like, some other random match. Yeah, even though we had we missed on Arcbow that one time, our library was at the point and we had enough mana where we really weren't going to be missing on Arcbow ever again. We were about to be able to rebounce, you know, have to fairy bounce either our Agent of Treachery or Chupacabra. We had a lot of things that we were going to be able to be doing there. Hmm. I mean, I, I really like lands, but that's probably too many lands. Just a bad, just a tad bit too many. Vampires. All right, so as we talked about, I am uh, worried about our aggro matchups. I'm not sure if I have enough against aggro. That's we talked about. That's like the one change we want to make to the deck. So this will be a, another good test here with the vampires. Yeah, I know, right? If only Masker, Masker Girl actually did, like, Masker Worm stuff. Actually just gave him minus two, minus two. D wouldn't have to just keep going. Could just do minus two, minus two. I would like it a lot more. Well, we're just dead. <laughs> Here. <laughs> One drop, two drop, Soren. We're just actually dead. I don't think I don't think Crucible Worlds would help us too much in this deck. Gosh, that Soren card is so hard to beat. The card is very good. Alright, so as we talked about, like these these negates need to be more removal. But they're not, so let's let's see. We're gonna be playing the Legion's Ends, playing the Veil of Summers. Um, I don't think I want Playcrafter as much in this matchup. I guess I don't really want the Frilled Mystics, though. I guess we're playing one Frilled Mystic. It's either like one Frilled Mystic or a Playcrafter. Um, Think about playing like one negate. Could counter Soren. Or just removal. I'll play one play crafter. The problem is just like you know like Legion's landing and all that kind of stuff, and like even just Sky Marcher Aspirant. They have a bunch of like creatures that I don't. The like play crafter is a bad trade with, basically. Really?
Obviously, they just have Duress and then Vanguard. Oh, they're going to have Legions then now? Yeah, probably. Just put us out of our misery. <laughs> Mind a risen reef. I'll take tubes though. Tubes ain't so bad. Better than drawing a land. I have not survived millennia to stand down now. Our fiends thirst for life. Man, that's five loyalty. I can't even kill it. Oh, God. what are you doing, deck? Why would they auto tap the two green lands when all I have are green cards? How is that possibly the auto tap? Show some respect. Bluffing, just gotta sh gotta keep like the tyrant score and bluff up. I guess. So yeah, basically just played the two druids they knew about. I want to keep this in hand. Just want to keep a card in hand. Um, because if we draw arc bow, I'm gonna want to be able to. Like, I want to have, like, a lot of mana here. We draw Arc Bow. We can Arc Bow for a bunch. The blood calls to your soul. No, it's a removal spell. Uh What a blowout. I mean that's just such a difference if Soren's gone or not gone here. Just all the difference in the world. Last card being removal. But because if Soren's gone, then we actually get to stabilize because they just have two four twos, and I have a four five. Our fiends thirst for life.
man, that would, could definitely been the be the difference in the game there. That that removal spell. My bloodline flows through you. Where's our legion's ends? Guess I have to chump block, I guess, with the Cavalier. See, I, I go to 13. Block a 5, take 9, go down to 4. If they just draw a Vampire, I die. Because they just play, play the Vampire sack, kill the Llanowar Elf, and then kill me. Guess I have to chump block. Man, that. Ugh. I think if they didn't have the duress for the Legion's End, how good our life would have been. They have whiffed on two duresses past that, but these Adanto Vanguards have just been worth so many cards. We got two more Legion's Ends in here. That we, if we just draw them, we'll be really lucky and get rid of all these vanguards. But... Pretty unlikely. Are they willing to just sacrifice a vanguard to do three to me? Say I let that happen and go down to one. Then the next turn, I have to attack with Cavalier, which means I don't have enough blockers. Yeah, I just have to block. Yeah, Legion's End is our top deck. They just let the vanguard die. I bestow a mighty curse. What are they doing? How would they possibly let the vanguard die? Have to just keep jump blocking. Just can't get rid of these vanguards.
Darn. They actually paid life this time. And that's lethal. Bleh. That was a really frustrating game. Match, but oh well. Uh, overall, so died to the final boss again, but still a very fun deck overall, and still and definitely felt like a good deck. Uh, player game over. We lost to the, our final boss. Um, yeah, that's the problem with playing eleven mana creatures. Is sometimes you, sometimes you just draw like seven of them and and lands and and not much else. But oh well. Um, so yeah, as we talked about, so like we don't want the negates, and so what we do want instead is we want the fourth legion's end in here for these. For like those kind of matchups, you know, like really like this card is just so good. We just need all four Legion's Ends and then one Assassin's Trophy. Also, they can just be a versatile removal spell. They can kill Soren, just kill just, you know, like everything. So, yeah, I think I think that's what we want in the sideboard instead of the negates. That should help out our those, that should help out our aggro matchups because, you know, we had both of our losses were game threes. Like one time it was, you know, multiple Steamkins that we couldn't deal with. The other time, multiple Adanto Vanguards. Uh, let's just get that other legions end in there, help those matchups out, and then and then trophy can get rid of like like your Sorens and and experimental frenzies and Chandras and you know all like those kind of weird permanents that are difficult to deal with. Um, so yeah, so that's that's going to be the the change there uh, for the next time. But a fun deck here. All right, that was a long long league. It's time for me to go feed Hawkeye, get dinner, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you're watching the video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over on YouTube. I'd appreciate that. Leave a comment also. That's always good. Uh, but thanks for watching. Soul Tie Arcbow, and I'll see you for the next video.